Welcome back. Rank has had a good week. There's been a bit of a panda update going on, in case you hadn't noticed, in case your rankings are bouncing around a little bit as this update rolls out, you're going to see some results one day and different results the following day. We call it the panda dance, and it's a bit like the old days of the Google dance, if you remember that. But this week, we're going to do SEO site review. So a lot of people find these really helpful, especially people who own the sites that I review. But this guy, well, this guy, he's got, well, brains bigger than a small star system. This guy is Nathan Huppets. Many of you may know him out there. He's got a site called costumes.com.au, which is a great looking site. And I'll just take you to it right now. So costumes.com.au only went live about, I think, a month ago. In fact, it went live when we were at the PISA conference. So that's where I first, first met Nathan a few years back. And I'll just go to that now. Here it comes. Now, this load time may not be Nathan. It may be Chrome. It may be our own bandwidth. But it's not quick in any case. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and have a look at the index. Beautiful site, great looking site, all about costumes. The first thing I'm going to go and do is have a look at the index. And we're going to say site, colon, uh, costumes.com.au. And there it is. And we can see here that costumes.com.au has got 35,700 pages. Now, Nathan has graciously given me access to his webmaster tools. I'm not going to show you any competitive data, but I'm just going to show you some areas that we look at to work out whether that's a good number or a bad number. One of the things, I've got this page set to about, uh, I think it's about 50 results. It might be more, it might be 100. And you can see down here, I've only got seven pages of results though. And Google's saying, there's 35,700 pages. That's odd. So we go into, let's see, our site map first of all, just to see if that number is a real number or not. That noise you can hear in the background is Nathan Huppert tweeting me saying, uh, thanks for finding that, I'm gonna fix that. He's not watching the show live or anything, I just tweeted him something before I started recording and he's tweeting me back. Anyway. So I'm going to go and have a look at the sitemap. Now it says we've only submitted 9,000 pages on the sitemap. So why do we have 35,000 pages? If you've got a discrepancy like that, the first thing you should go and have a look at, and this happens to e-commerce sites again and again and again and again, and for a number of reasons. The first thing you should go and have a look at, and the quickest way to find out whether you've got duplication of content possibly, is usually a typical case that the, the Google bot is going into your different products and it's spidering and crawling, crawling them at all these different URLs and you've possibly got duplicate content. That can be a big signal for Google, uh, especially with the panda update, that it wants to downgrade your, your whole site. It hasn't happened to Nathan in this situation. In fact, Nathan's uh, search traffic is going through the roof right now. So we go into HTML improvements. That will immediately tell you if you've got sort of uh, duplicate title tags. And you can see here, we've got nearly a thousand duplicate title tags. So there's probably a thousand duplicate pages. Then up here, it says we've got missing title tags. We've got 3,700, that's bad. So you go in here and Nathan's aware of these issues and he's fixing them right now. But it's bad from Google's perspective because they're seeing a lot of empty content on the site in this situation, which is what these pages are. So, and this will typically happen with the e-commerce sites, and sometimes, most times, in fact, you won't find out these things until you go live, until Google has actually had a chance to crawl your site. Because um, unless you run a really good bot, a, a great bot to run if you're on a Mac is Screaming Frog. I think there is a Windows version for it as well. You run that over your site, and it sometimes will pick up these sorts of, of issues. So you can see there, that's just a big, fat, empty page with nothing in it and shouldn't be crawled by Google. So now, one of the, the, the problems you can have, if you, if you catch something like this, a, a normal reaction for a web developer is to say, quick, I'll just go and block all those pages in robots.txt. 
The problem with doing that is, is that these pages have already been crawled. It's probably a, a better action first up to go and add a no index, no follow tag. So then when Google comes back and crawls all those pages, it just takes them out of the index. Otherwise, if you block it with robots.txt, they're going to be in the index for a very long time until Google, for whatever reason, decides to take them out of the index. Nick, when I see that, I all, the, these sorts of issues, I also know there's probably going to be a lot of uh, 404s. So what I then go in is I have a look at health, and we have a look at the crawl errors. And we can see here we've got 937 crawl errors. Now, one of the reasons for this in uh, Nathan's case is that the site uh, was a new site, redirected from an old site, did a site changeover and all the rest of it and found a bunch of URLs uh, that weren't caught in that move. And that's always hard to do on a large site, 9,000 pages. There's going to be some you miss. So uh, that's why that's there. So that's fixed. But having said all that, the site is ranking extraordinarily well. And when you look at the traffic and the search queries, and this gives you an idea of opportunities too, you can see here like this big spike of search impressions. Now remember, this is uh, results that is, or search phrases that you're appearing in search for, not necessarily clicked on. The red one is what's being clicked on. So you can see here the difference in, in impressions and actual clicks. But that's a massive jump over the last couple of days. So if I go and have a look at that, and I always... Google's always got a bit of a time lag going on. So I'm going to go from the 22nd of June until now. See if I can find out where has this spike in traffic come from. And what I want to look at is the with change button because that will tell me how much the traffic has changed, how much the ranking has changed. And you can see there right, right straight up, you've got 400% change there. You've got a 250% change there. This is in search impressions. And then we've seen these massive jumps in rankings. So this, this column here is an average ranking over time. We've seen this one's gone up 40 spots right onto the front page. So a lot of good stuff is happening with the site right now. That's an indication that something's going well, or might be the panda dance. We don't know yet. So, and, and from this, one of the things you can look at, of course, is go and look at impressions. Because if you sort by impressions, you'll see some phrases that... And this is, I remember, this is like a 24-hour period. So you can see, you know, which, which phrases are driving the most traffic, which ones you should spend more time on. You know, you might see one that's it's got potentially, you know, 500 hits per day, but you're ranking number 10 for it. Well, you're not going to get many of those 500 t hit hits, nearly said it, uh, ranking at number 10. Not a number 10, is what I was going to say. So that is the first round that you do. You okay, go fix all those things, health. Next thing, I would go back to into your health and have a look at the crawl stats, especially on a big e-commerce site. And we can see here, and this is something Nathan's already mentioned to me that they're working on um, site performance. You can see here, 3.3 seconds, that's really high for, this is page load time to the Google bot. When I go and check that on the webpagetest.org, we can see it's pretty good, except there's a couple of things there. Time to first bite, uh, that's the biggie. So it's taking, uh, and this is out of, uh, this is the, uh, a fetch tool, if you like, from the US, that's fetching a, tool, uh, a website in Australia. And you can see here, it's taking, in the first pass, it's saying it's taking six and a half seconds from America. So you want to get that down, and this is, this is the biggie here, so you, and there's some opportunities here. Uh, now, Nathan's doing everything else right, of course. It's you know, on a content distribution network, all those sorts of things. Uh, it's running Magento. However, and I know Nathan disagrees with me on this one, but I'm just going to come out and say it. There's no H1s on this front page, Nathan. And we've had this conversation before, and uh, him and Wei Fong, Hi Wei, have both said, no, nah, H1s. But think about it. It's good document structure. If you have a heading at the top of your page that says this is what this page is about, as well as a page title, you're hitting things on the head. You're saying to Google, this is what it's about. Now, you've got to make a way for it. You've got to find a way for it to look nice. 
This tool I'm using here is SEO for Firefox by Aaron Wall. And it's saying that there's no, there's no heading tags on this front page. Now, you look at, you can see these, this is the page title here, Costumes Australia, buy costumes for kids and adults and costumes.com.au. Now the site ranks for buy costumes for kids. I haven't checked to see whether it ranks for buy costumes for adults. Excellent. No, not so excellent. No, but no, and that's not excellent at all. In fact, it's the opposite of excellent. It's a bit crap, really. Well, it's not that crap. It's down here. So that gives you some indication of you know, how important your page title is. I'm not saying that's the only thing that's why it's not ranking. But, you know, are those phrases, if these are the, um, the important phrases, which I'm assuming they are because they are in the page title of the home page, I would then go and try to find by... I, I haven't got buy costumes on that front page at all. And if that's an important phrase, I would certainly do that. And you have to find a way of doing it nicely so it's attractive to the user as well as to Google. So those phrases up there. The other thing I've done too is I've had a quick squeeze at this bit of content here. And I've just, one of the things I always want to find out is the content duplicated anywhere else on the web, apart from even your own site. But if it's duplicated on your own site as well, then you certainly want to fix that. So I've just taken that piece of content and I can see here's one, two, three, four, five different sites it's on at the moment. Now, the good thing here is that the site is ranking them one for its own piece of content, but we see a lot of sites where you go and do that duplicate content search and you're not ranking for your own content. Some other directory is that you've set up previously or whatever. Get unique content on your own pages, really important. Also, if you've got um, a lot of 404s in your e-commerce site, chances are it's because you're out of stock and you switch that product off or you've um, discontinued the product. I'd like to, to know your thoughts on this as a retailer, if you are a retailer, what do you think's better? Is it better for a user just to get a broken page, or is it better for a user to say, get a redirect to say an equivalent product, or say to a page that says, this product's currently out of stock, uh, add it to your wish list. What's better? What you're trying to do here is avoid a site that's bad for users, because if Google can work that out, then that's gonna affect your rankings. So they're the main things that I looked at with this site, and just to see, you know, what are the phrases that have jumped up in the past 24 hours? Uh, an example of a really well-built site, well-optimized site. I mean, these are, these are difficult phrases. Buy costumes for kids uh, is a difficult phrase. I think he's number one for Costumes Australia. No, he's not. No, see, I'd, I'd put a H1 on the front page. That's just me. See yourself. Uh, try it out, Nathan. Do an A-B test. That's all I'm saying. Uh, they're the things that I, I would look at. Great site, fantastic traffic. It's, it's going all the way up. Uh, I've seen some discrepancies in the different cities, but for the most part, it's pretty consistent across all the cities. Now, if you're in the US, you're going to see even larger swings, I would imagine, than we see in here in Australia. But if you've got a, an e-commerce site catering for a national audience, you now have to know what your rankings are in each city. So we're setting up a new reporting tool at the moment here that helps us track that. But go and have a look. One of the easiest ways that you can do this, if you've got Google Chrome or any of the other browsers that have private browsing, just go in, just type, say, buy costumes. Well, not buy costumes, of course, but your own keyword that you're trying to track. Now, hopefully you're ranking in your own city. And here we see costumes.com.au is down here. And you can see here, I'm in Melbourne. I've just clicked on search tools. So now I'm gonna go and check Sydney. So what are we, number one, two, three, four, five, six in Melbourne. In Sydney, and you can see here it says Google search now in Sydney. 
in Sydney, we are well, slightly better. I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, four. So that's good. That's consistent at least. Sometimes you'll see that and it will be, you'll be there for one city and you won't, you'll be completely gone for another. I'll do that. Brisbane. And yeah, very consistent, slightly lower, but very consistent. So hopefully that's helpful. And go and check out costumes.com.au because they've got a lot of fantastic costumes. If you're into that sort of thing, uh, yeah, for plays and that sort of thing. Stop it. And we'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Bye.